pano mwingine ambapo tunaarifiwa kwamba John Kerry ambaye alikuwa wakati mmoja katibu wa masuala ya nje kule Marekani pia anatoa taarifa yake kuhusiana na ripoti ya uangalizi kwenye shughuli hii nzima hebu tuweze kusikiza Above all else this election belongs to the people of Kenya It is their hopes for the future that are on the line And we who are privileged to observe do so very mindful of the fact that we are here supporting the legitimacy of the process, the sanctity of each Kenyan's vote. We are not here taking the side of any candidate or party. Our allegiance is to a peaceful, transparent, accountable, free, and fair election. Now, I just comment that I was serving as Secretary of State in 2013 when the last election took place. And in the aftermath of that, I had occasion to work with and talk to both candidates and try to work through uh, differences of opinion about the outcome. I am convinced that goodwill and good faith and a proper analysis of this election and the rules which have guided it that Kenya can move forward and embrace progress significant progress in its democracy we call on all the candidates whether they are victors or losers in this race to work within the rule of law and the legitimate dispute process in order to challenge any aspect of this election where they have evidence that somehow that dispute made a material difference on the outcome of the election We affirm with conviction that the judicial process, the judicial system of Kenya and the election laws themselves make full and adequate provision for accountability in this election. The streets do not. Now, I want to congratulate the people of Kenya for their patience and their calm and for turning out in large numbers to participate in choices about their future. Importantly, we would like to make clear the test of this election is really quite straightforward. It is whether the vote of registered Kenyans has been protected or is being or will be and will be counted in a manner that gives confidence through transparency and accountability to the overall election that's the test it is our firm conclusion that the IEBC has put in place and is thus far following a detailed process of paper ballot counting and security which if followed through to the final steps can give each Kenyan confidence that their vote was properly recorded and that therefore this election can appropriately certify the outcome. Yes, we observed minor variances here and there that evidenced a deviation from the established process, but none that we thus far feel affected the overall integrity of the process. Now, there are things that need to be refined and corrected, lessons that need to be applied. But believe me, this is true of almost any election anywhere. The bottom line is that we believe the IEBC put in place a detailed, transparent process of voting, counting, reporting, and securing the vote, all of which lend significant credibility and accountability and therefore can when and if followed through to the end provide confidence in the results that is what is important to each and every kenyan's vote now we witnessed in more than 400 different observation posts at random choices around the country agents for many candidates all being simultaneously included in reaching an understanding of what constituted a valid ballot we witnessed multiple parties 
sharing in the simultaneous counting of each ballot, in the opening and shutting of the polling stations, in the opening and the sealing of the ballot boxes, after themselves counting, we witnessed the signing off of multiple parties who publicly agreed on the final tallies of the 34A counting summaries and who received copies of those documents on the spot. All of this provides an extensive traceable trail of agreement by many parties on the paper balloting process and therefore on the outcome, including a vast majority of stations where both NASA and Jubilee agents were present and both signed off, and certainly the vast majority of those stations sampled by the observers in many places around the country. In the end, let me emphasize, it is the paper ballots and the accounting process established by the IEBC that tell the story of this election, not the electronic transmission of those numbers. So we call on all Kenyans to carefully evaluate the facts and the details of the process that the IEBC put in place and has been painstakingly following. We hope they will agree with us that when fairly and fully implemented to completion, that process provides Kenyans with the integrity of this election. Dr. Touré. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me tell you how much I enjoyed observing the Kenyan election process with uh, Secretary John Kerry on behalf of the Carter Center, whom I like to recognize for its great work in supporting democracy in our continent, in the African continent. Secretary Kerry and I come obviously from two different backgrounds, but yet we chair the universal language of democracy. And then naturally we came to the same fundamental conclusion he chaired with you. As a Senegalese, as an African, I'm very satisfied with the fact that Kenyan people went to the electoral booth in large numbers. On election days, I witnessed very long lines of men and women, some carrying babies, all patiently waiting to exercise their political rights. I saw party agents sitting together the whole day, quietly discussing the same atmosphere prevailed during the counting process. Presiding officers, I saw, knew what they have to do and treated voters with civility. These are excellent signs for democracy in Kenya. Like Senegal, Kenya is a country made of a large number of young people. Actually, I think 60% of the population might be below 35, like in Senegal. Our African young people must grow up in the culture of democracy so they believe and respect the institution and the leaders people choose for themselves through fair and free elections. This election that took place marked, to my view, progress as they were much more peaceful than the previous ones. No incidents were noted on election day, although, as Secretary Kerry said, the brutal murder of Chris Musanto is still a shock to everybody, and it must be investigated fully, and the murderers must be brought to justice. I like to also recognize the hard and good work of IEBC. That is the most important body, as we know, in organizing these elections. All staff, I think, honored 
the memory of their assassinated colleagues by staying focused and dedicated to their task. They need to be recognized and even congratulated. IEBC must continue its work to its end while substantiating its result with the Form 34A and Form 34B, and I understand that is going on. I heard that there might be three women governors. I would be delighted if it is confirmed. <laughs> because women must be involved at decision-making level. And I take the opportunity, Madam Minister, in front of me, to strongly recommend that the constitutional provision of the two-thirds be implemented the soonest so Kenya lives up to its CEDO commitment, the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Soon, ladies and gentlemen, we will hear final result from IEBC. And I would like to see all candidates accept the verdict of the Kenyan people. The winner must be gracious in their victory. Naam mtazamaji kumradhi kidogo hapo mawasiliano yamekatika lakini Masti. ni mawasiliano ambayo yanatolewa hivi sasa kutoka kwa waangalizi wengine kutoka kituo cha kata ambacho kinaongozwa na aliyekuwa katibu huko Marekani ambaye ni John Kerry ambao ametoka kuzungumza hapo akizungumzia namna ambavyo shughuli nzima ilivyofanyika na vile ambavyo matokeo yake na wamefurahishwa zaidi na jinsi mchakato wa kuanzia kupiga kura hadi kumaliza na hadi kuhesabiwa kura na hatimaye washindi kuanza kutangazwa wamesema hilo ni jambo la msingi sana hasa akipongeza tume ya IEBC hapo nitakuacha na matangazo hayo ambayo tunarudi tena huko katika mkutano huo unaoendelea hivi sasa lakini patakapo tutakaporudi tena taarifa zetu kwa lugha ya Kiingereza itakuwa zimeanza <laughs> Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Lucky baby. Okay. Early indoctrination. Okay. So Fimukwena from the South African Broadcasting Corporation. I, the statement by the opposition leader Raila Odinga on issue of hacking. Have you looked at that? And uh, also the statement continued to raise questions and you look in the streets of Nairobi it is quite, uh, it's very quiet. It looks like people are scared. What is your message to the Kenyans? Should they continue with business as usual? Do you not go ahead, Dr. I'll interrupt. Definitely, I said it in my statement. Mr. Odinga met with the team of observers who accepted to hear his case. I do believe that what he's saying deserves to be investigated later on, but his case has to be put forward to the IEBC, who should look into it as an allegation. But at this point, let's remember what was said. What matters is the Form 34A and the Form 34B. I do believe that all party agents received it so it takes little effort to compare what party agents have in their hands to the official numbers. That's not very difficult uh, to do. Because let's remember that at the end, behind any system, you have people. From Senegal, I think we went through different processes. We changed president three times in the last two decades. We don't have of any electronic process. It's all papers. And it can be trustful. So that's my answer to that. It deserves to be investigated, but yet it doesn't prevent from tallying 34 A's and 34 B's against what is going to be announced by IEBC. And in any case, it should be taken to the appropriate structure, either court, IEBC first, and maybe court, if there is dissatisfaction 
So everything is dealt with within legal framework. And I would advise to the Kenyan people to keep being strong, as I said, go about their regular matters as they did. They made us very proud as African when I saw long lines. I commended the discipline within the lines. As Secretary said, some babies, they had to be marked. I don't know whether it's within the electoral court, but sometimes you need to have some uh, initiatives. But all was in good mood. And we must say that was a very good surprise, because before that, um, we hear that there was some fear. People reconnect to what happened in 2007 and 13. This is a huge way forward. And it's time for Africa to put behind the, the times and the days where every election would put fear in everybody. Election is not about you know, uh, struggle. It should be, actually, um, a good moment for democracy. And that's the message I would like to put forward to our youth. They should not accept to be part of a violent game or anything like that. They should trust democracy. They should trust the institution. They would choose for themselves and trust the leaders. And the leaders must live up to the truth put in them when they're chosen by conducting themselves very decently and by, of course, conducting good governance. Thank you. So let me comment also. Um, <coughs> we met yesterday with, with uh, Mr. Odinga and some of his team, and we listened very carefully to uh, his uh, concerns that he expressed and were expressed publicly yesterday. Um, and they deserve to be taken seriously. Any, any candidate's uh, legitimate evidence of something that has happened needs to be judged, but it needs to be judged through the appropriate process. And, and, and you know, you, you can't have members of your party or others engaging in, in a kind of threat unveiled to the public when you say, you know, go to work for now, but we may need you call to action at some point in time. That is not, that is not the way to proceed forward here. If there is a legitimate complaint, then there is a process, as I said very clearly, for the airing of that complaint and the appropriate democratic evaluation of whether or not that complaint uh, is, is legitimate. Now, let's assume for a moment that it is, that, that there was somebody who somehow got in if they did or didn't. The question is, were they able to change any material results? Were they able to change anything? And that is measurable. The integrity of the election process remains completely open to a process of transparent accountability for all the people of Kenya. So if it did take place, the Form 34As, which are in the hands of agents, in the boxes, transmitted immediately, can all be determined as to whether or not they were altered or whether or not something happened that made it different. That is the force, frankly, and effectiveness of the IEBC's decision to have this painstaking process, which is now being, uh, you know, carried out form for form, line for line, vote count for vote count. And that is what ultimately can give the integrity to this electoral process. So are there variations in those? Thus far, it does not appear as if there are. And thus far, it appears as if the reports that were made with, with everybody watching. I mean, I sat there and looked at and listened to the, this very bright, capable young woman who managed this uh, particular polling station, who brought everybody in in a remarkably inclusive and friendly way. And, and she said, now, here's what I've put into the, to the machine. Look at it. Everybody got to look at the numbers. She said, OK, do you all agree? Yes, I agree. I'm going to push send. She sent. And out it went, and everybody was happy. Now, that, it seems to me, is a measure of the reality of what did or didn't take place in this election. And, and I'm not vouching for the final product, because it's not over yet. But what I am vouching for is that, and what I think we are all vouching for, is that there is in place a process which will allow that integrity to be measured and that can ultimately resolve disputes with respect to uh, the question of hacking or any other 
uh, situation here. Now, on the issue of fear and, and what people are feeling, uh, it, it seems to me that uh, if the workers who had the most reason to feel immediately intimidated because of a murder, the direct colleagues of, of Chris Masando, if the people who were on that commission could go to work the next day and say, we're going to have an election, then I think every Kenyan ought to take strength and resolve from that and be ready to go to work and prove that the democracy which he died for and that they voted for is going to work and that they're not going to be intimidated. And they should also make clear to their leaders, whomever they are, whatever level of government, that they want a responsible reaction to whatever comes with this election. I know what it's like to lose an election. I lost by one state the presidency of the United States. And I had a lot of reasons to complain about what happened in Ohio or other states. But you, can, you got to get over it and move on. And I'm not saying one can or the other. If Mr. Kenyatta winds up losing in this race, he has to make a decision to cede power, and he has to do what is appropriate. If Mr. Odinga was, who knows? Let's see where the count comes out. But what we're here to affirm today so that this doesn't get out of control and somehow become subject to rumor and speculation is the process that was put in place is proving its value thus far that the capacity to prove every vote is there and that the sanctity of those votes is being